This video is going to use the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to explain the crowding out effect and it's going to do this in relation to fiscal policy. If you don't understand what this diagram is showing, you should go and watch the video on expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy in the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. Further, you could go uh, backwards to see how aggregate supply and aggregate demand are determined and there are videos on all of these topics on this channel. Basically, what is happening here is that the government have used their fiscal policy, which is their budget, to increase their government spending from G1 to G2. The increase in government spending has led to an increase in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, and this has led to the aggregate demand line shifting upwards. And as a result, we have a new level of national income. We've moved from NY1 to NY2. Again, to see in detail how this works, you can go and watch the video on expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy. In this example, I've also highlighted investment. So we have I1, and investment hasn't changed for, uh, as we've moved from AD1 to AD2. In order to finance the extra government spending, however, the government may have had to borrow some money. By entering into that market, the government sector crowds out the business sector. And what that means is that the pool of money that's available for investment is reduced because the government has come and taken some of that money in order to finance the government spending. The increased competition for the limited amount of money leads to an increase in the price of that money, which is an increase in the interest rate. And so now as a result of the government borrowing that money, interest rates are higher, the competition for a small amount of money is greater, and business investment is now going to fall. If business investment were to fall, then the aggregate demand curve is going to shift down. And now we have a new level of aggregate demand. We have here AD3. Now this is equal to consumption plus this new lower level of investment, which we'll call I2, plus that increased government spending, which was G2, and the others remain unchanged. In this case, the government has still increased the size of the economy. They have increased government spending by this total amount here, and then investment has decreased by this smaller amount here. The bit that's left over is the final total increase in the level of aggregate demand. This leads to a new level of national income, at the new equilibrium point and the new national equilibrium national income equilibrium is NY3. The effect of the expansionary fiscal policy should have led to an increase in national income from NY1 to NY2 and originally it did but then we had a crowding out of private investment and the crowding out, out effect led to the national income level falling from NY2 to NY3. So instead of making it all the way to NY2, uh, the total net increase ends up only being to NY3 because of the crowding out effect. And we can see on the diagram that aggregate demand started here, it increased up to AD2, but it ended up down at AD3. National income began at NY1, it made its way to NY2, but finished at the level NY3. So the positive effects of the fiscal policy are reduced somewhat by the crowding out effect.